Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here from theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios for a CUBE conversation and we've just talked about it time and time again, right? It's the big companies that have the big shows. We do a lot of those big shows, but it's really the startups that really make Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley. They're constantly starting. People are leaving companies, starting new companies. And this is a great story. A company who actually visited in 2016 or had a quick catch up at RSA and we're excited to get an update two years later. Uh, and so to welcome to the studio, Amram Shakar. He's the founder and CEO of Spotinst. Amram, great to see you again. Absolutely, great seeing you again as well. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it's been since 2016 when I looked it up and that was like uh, in spring, I guess. So a lot of stuff has happened in the last two years. Give us an update on Spotins. Whoa, like how do I summarize two years of, of a startup? Like every quarter is like a year for a startup, right? So uh, I think uh, right now we're just, uh, we've been like three employees when we talked last in 2016 and now we're over 100. Uh, grew the company, like um, today we're headquarters in San Francisco, office in New York, office in Tel Aviv. Um, grew our customer base to like over a thousand today. Over a thousand customers. Over a thousand customers today and just keeping on trying to keep the growth on. Right, well you made a smart move early on as you connected your, you know, your train to, to the, the rocket ship that is public cloud. And I think when we first talked a couple years ago you were participating in the AWS marketplace, and now you've since added, I think you said Google, and obviously Microsoft is yours. So again, for the people that don't know Spotins, give them kind of the quick uh, 101. Yeah, so if you look at the cloud infrastructure space, so Amazon was like, you know, the, the leader since, you know, we, we all knew what is cloud infrastructure. And cloud infrastructure, by definition, they have com access compute capacity. Access compute capacity is there for support natural growth and support spikes in, in demand of um, AWS customers. So Amazon always want to take these access compute capacity and have it like available for customers to purchase it. Right. But still they want to have some access to that capacity whenever they need that. So there is no guarantee, there is no SLA. So what we wanted to do to enable customers to use that access compute capacity because they can buy it in very cheap price and we are the software that helps them to get the SLA. So that's what Spotins does, uh, enabling companies to unlock more compute for a reasonable price. So do you buy it and then resell it back to them so that you can control the management and or you know, apply kind of your SLA type of tools or does your software sit there and the customer, they're still making that purchase directly through Amazon but, but the, the software is executing those details uh, on their behalf? So that's the latter. Okay. We're not like, uh, sitting between the customer and the cloud and buying and selling. We're just like providing our software to the customers, enabling the customers to use that smart software so they can leverage compute more easily. Right, so what are the key components that take the spot instance that doesn't have an SLA and makes it kind of SLA worthy for your customers? Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. A key component is um, statistical analysis that we're doing behind the scenes is an AI-based platform that basically we're always looking at the trends that AWS terminates capacity. So that basically tells us, all right, on Mondays, AWS reacts like this, and on these hours, this is how you can get capacity. So basically our statistical model can tell the customer, hey, on 7 a.m. you should switch from one server to another before AWS takes it away from you. So that's how we bring SLA to a non-SLA compute. Right. Because we know what's probably going to happen. So how does Amazon sell that spot? Is, is there some, you buy it by a time duration, so you know you at least can you know, run a job without worrying about it suddenly going away in the middle of your job? Or how, how is it actually priced and bundled? So there are several ways. Uh, the most common way is just get spot capacity, and whenever AWS needs that capacity back, they will take it away. Uh, and then you are- So what a, happens if you're running a job? So you are, as a customer, you need to take care of that. Okay. You need to make if sure you get that, a warning flag or something, hey, we're taking this away and- You get two minutes, minutes notification. You get two minutes, okay. Uh, so sometimes it's more than enough, and sometimes just you just cannot handle with two minutes. Right. Uh, that's why you really need to choose which type of app you would probably want to use for a spot. Uh, but the good thing is that with our software, you don't have to worry about that. Because like you basically tell the software, my app runs and we need X amount of minutes, we need X amount of compute to complete our job, and then we make it happen. 
Right, right. So do most of the customers then use this for specific jobs that they want to run that they know are going to take X, X amount of, of compute power and run for an approximate level of time so they can schedule it, whether it's you know, some type of a batch job or an end of quarter run or those types of things, or can they actually start to integrate it into their actual operational software that's running you know, pretty much all the time and it's really more just a, a resource shift based on economics? Yeah, that, that's a great point because historically, if you look at Spot, Spot was exactly for what you've mentioned, which is bad jobs, things you need to schedule, you know that it's going to take you X amount of time to complete specific workload. Right. And that's what people did with Spot. Uh, and the way we're looking at it is like the next generation of like, even new applications like web services, like containers, like any type of, of, of an application layer can use Spot uh, just because we take uh, uh, we leverage the fact that these applications that we're building today are all highly available, highly resilient, fault tolerant by definition. So we know if you know to orchestrate spot replacement in a very, very uh, um, accurate way, you'll be able to run workload forever on spot instances without even noticing a single interruption. Interesting, because you're just kind of shifting, you're, you're reacting to the spot market dynamically uh, using your software. Correct. Very cool. Now another thing we talked about before we turn on the cameras on, you've got some, some good visibility um, based on the software as to what people are doing. And, and you made a really interesting comment on the rise of Kubernetes. You know, we first heard about Kubernetes, I think at VM, well, actually we got the story from Craig at, it was something called Google Cloud Platforms, like yeah. Google Live, or in 2014, in the story of the naming. But you said that you've really seen a significant change in the, in the landscape over the last year or so. Give us a little more color on that. Yeah, that, that's correct. And, and the funny thing here is that we didn't see it coming like two years ago. Like when we've discussed, we didn't even know what what's Kubernetes is. Uh, we know that containers are like going to be the big next thing because it's so easy to deploy applications with containers. But then you had like so many different options, right? You had Kubernetes and Amazon had their own stuff and Docker released their own stuff. But then in the past year, we're just seeing something phenomenal that we've never seen before or like never seen in any other area in our company, which is everybody just consolidating around Kubernetes as an orchestration layer for containers. Right, right, and we 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 hear that all the time, but it's interesting, you're actually seeing it in the execution of what people are purchasing. Well, exciting, so another big part of the news, you said you, you got some new funding, so give us kind of the details there, and what are you going to do with some of this capital? What are, you know, as, as we, so hopefully it won't be two years till we, until we see each other again, you know, what are some of your priorities looking forward to how you're going to deploy some of this capital? Yeah, so yeah, gladly we were able to secure another uh, funding round. And it's just because there is like, uh, there is a, such a big opportunity in front of us to capture. Uh, the growth has been phenomenal in the past two years. Uh, uh, Deloitte has crowned us as the fastest growing uh, startup in, in Israel last year, in 2017. Uh, we grew like more than 1400% uh, year over year. Uh, and just like seeing the opportunity in front of us, like replicating the same thing we did for AWS customers and doing it in other clouds as well, like Google and Azure, and seeing all this rocket ship, as you said, cloud infrastructure space, just continuing to grow in such pace year over year, we're just going to deploy all that capital into growth. Right, well very exciting, and uh, congratulations, and thanks for coming in and give us an, the update. Absolutely, thank you. All right, he's Amram, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios having a CUBE conversation. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.